Hey guys, what is up? My name is Zorl. Welcome to this new guide on how to survive every single round in Grief on Town. And now the farm guide will be out a little bit later. It's just that we decided to do this one first, as it was a more of this more commonly played one. Okay, to start off with the game, you want to just wait till the loading screen to hurry the hell up. And now, if you actually press your back button, you can click on each player's name and mute them, as you can see I'm doing here. Okay, and now I'm not going to show you the first four rounds because it's really pointless. If you can't do the first four rounds, you might just want to keep playing solo to get a little bit better. It's really easy to do the first four rounds. You can just survive with a pistol. And now if you think you're struggling, you don't want to go buy a gun because the price of the gun for what it actually gives you for the rounds it survives is really bad. Once you're at round four, you want to have enough money to go and buy the MP5, which is in the house building, we like to call it. It's not the bar. It's not the bank. It's the other one. I don't really know what its name is. We just call it the house as it's the main spot for camping. Now, as you can see here, I keep redoing the windows up because if you see, it gives me 10 points each time, which is pretty handy. Like, So, you need to have 500 points in your points at all times. The reason for this is the MP5 ammo costs 500. It's pretty cheap, but it gives a lot and it's really effective until around 15, which we'll talk from there. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm scouting around for a few zombies. You don't want to be doing this on a higher round. I'm just doing this because it's round 5 and I know 100% I'm not going to go down here more or less. And now as you can see, the gun kills him in a few hits and this uses Black Ops 2 crappy connection. And now this does it a few times in the game as the players start to leave for some reason. I don't have a clue why. They just thought it might be their best choice to leave. So now we'll wait till this to hurry the hells up. And there you go. We're now back on green run. Okay, now we'll carry on the adventure to surviving and beating these guys on grief. And now this will work against any rank. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> this will work against any single rank, no matter what rank they are. Now, if you join a game and they have the top rank, don't back out in fear. Now, if all of your team do this, all four members do this tactic, it should be easily done. On the round where you earn 1,750 points, that means you can open the door to the house and you can grab the MP5 at the same time. So what me and Varksaw did is we waited till we both got them points. Well, he got them actually. He got them first. He opened the door, got me the MP5, and he's doing the exact same effort here. Now we're doing this just to prove it works and that it doesn't really depend on what type of playstyle you have, how they play. Anybody can do this as long as you just don't get hit by a zombie really. This is challenging until the first five rounds because you have to survive with just a pistol on your own. And when you're out of the pistol, if your team doesn't get a max ammo, it can be pretty difficult. My best tip is if you knife the zombies when somebody else is shooting them, this might be classed as a dick move, but it really doesn't matter. It's all about points here. Alright, I'll skip the rounds a few more as you don't really need to see the first five rounds. And this is where I buy the jugger. Now the jugger is always the first perk and it costs 2,500. It's quite expensive, but on the higher rounds, this money is going to be wasting. The next perk we're going to try and go for is the quick revive. As this game is a team game and you want to keep as many members on your team alive as possible. And now if you see your team members on the other side of the map and it's covered with zombies... I personally would not risk and go get them because if you go down there's not really any point in them being up they aren't going to have any perks they aren't going to have much ammo they might not even have any ammo if you just respawned so you could you could risk your life for a guy of a cult who can't even kill the zombies so the best thing to do is if they are near you and you know you can get them risk free go and pick them up give them a hand so as you can see here, I nearly have enough for the points. It's actually 1,500 points for the quick revive. The double tap is 2,000, and the sleight of hand of another as a speed caller is 3,000 points. Now, I would probably get the speed caller last as it's most expensive, or maybe double tap as it's like the least ex least ineffective. Now, if you wanted to check out the farm guide, you're gonna have to wait a few more days while we just getting the clips up, editing it, making it, because these games last around 30 minutes each if you're with a good team on the enemies. So as you can see, I've had to cut it down quite a lot, and I've just got the best bits of this clip. Not the bits where you're waiting for round 1 to 4, where there's no zombies. 
another thing is knifing the enemies. Now, I wouldn't suggest you go around knifing the enemies. It's just going to really annoy them. And then they're going to do it back to you. What you want to do, as you can see here, is the meat. What you need to do is you need to throw it at an enemy and it's called tainting them. If you do this, they will more than likely die if they're amateurs. And it'll taint them. And if you hit them, it will, as you can see, it went there and... If you actually hit them on them, they'll become they'll have green smoke around them, and all the zombies will go to them. And now, if you are a noob, they might really not like this because they don't know what to do. All right now, you pick up your quick revive. You got your second perk. As you can see, I waited till I had more money just in case. And you need to remember this: you need ammo over perks. If you have no perks and you need ammo, I'd take the ammo first and not the perks because if you go down because you can't defend yourself. That's more or less waste of ammo, but you can at least get some points if you go down, if you know what I mean. So I'd always take the ammo. And with the jugger, you don't want to buy it as soon as you get 2,500. You want to make sure you have enough points to buy ammo. The next step you need to do is if you have enough money, you need to run to the box. And I got really unlucky here, but I'll show you. You can still make a win with a, uh, what's it called, a 511, I think it's called, the pistol. And now if you get double these pistols, for some reason they seem more effective, even though... Even if you just use one of them, they seem to have more damage. And on around round 15, they take four bullets of this pistol. This is a Kimbo to actually kill the zombies with ease. Okay, now in here, I, you can see me run to the bar and the house. And now if you get in trouble, you want to run up the stairs in the house. Up the stairs, jump. If you go to the opposite side of the quick revive, you can stand at the edge. You'll see this in the part of the video. Just help my dude up there. See, he was close to me. If it was at the other side of the map, I wouldn't have risked it because you can see it's round nine and it could be pretty fatal. <laughs> Another thing is, don't ever underestimate the enemy. If there's four of you on one team, but one of him on the other team, it's easier for him to stay alive because he's not having to watch anybody else's back. He can just keep his own thing. But with you, you need to actually defend your teammates, help them out if they get downed or... And it's quite annoying. And they're also getting in your way. So he's getting more points if he stays on one side. Now as you can see, I'm still using the um, MP5. That's how much of an amazing gun it is. People underestimate it because it's on the wall. People always thought that on the wall guns were not the good thing to do. You always want to buy the chest. But this is completely wrong because with the MP5 you pay 1000 and you get the gun. Which is a great gun until around 15. And then it takes a bit more oomph to kill it. You might want to upgrade it or you might want to buy a double tap to increase the fire rate on it and as you can see I'm trying to save up for another perk we're just camping in the main house and now if we get off a run we're gonna jump behind us we can either run round back the stairs which is kind of a dangerous thing to do and um, which is not a really good idea on the high rounds or you can run to the other bar and run up the stairs and then jump off and there's a second piece of meat as you can see, I kind of tated him. He was on my team, which <laughs> wasn't really the best thing to do. But if you can actually handle the zombies on the easy rounds, such as round 10 and maybe below, you can do this because they're. Or you can throw it just. If you, I seem to find that if you throw it on a person, it stays longer than if you throw it on the floor. That's why I actually threw it on him there. And as long as he's not a noob, he's not going to really go down. Now with this guide a bit of practice with it once you get used to the method you'll be able to survive whole games without dying at least it not even once and this is going to go great for your rank because I personally believe that the ranks are based on your kills to down ratio and if you're constantly getting maybe a hundred kills a game with zero deaths which is probably around around 13 average which most people die at until you get the harder games where they last around 20 which is pretty annoying you're sat in a game for about an hour and there's only one dude left, which we had to actually do. And that guy was good. We sent him for a request. He was like, yeah, man's sick. But we nearly um, took out a full team with just me and... Um, I forgot his name now. Voxel. And they thought, oh, we are going to win. They said in the chat, we're going to win. You have no chance. There's four of us, two of you. But yet they end up getting beat because there's more of their team to mess up. And they were at the other bar. And now as you can see, I'm the only one here. So any zombie that comes in here is going to be pure points for me. Which is quite an amazing thing. It's pretty great. And now then guys, this guide is actually going to work constantly. 
So if you want to quick recap, if you don't want to go to the video if you missed it a little bit, what you can do is you wait to as enough points until you can afford the MP5. You go and get enough points so you can afford Jugger and an ammo. Then your Quick Revive is your second perk. With these two perks, these are the main perks you want. The other perks are just like little, little bonuses. They don't do a lot for you, as you can live without them. And the Jugger though, it's a, it's a perk you need to have. If you don't have the Juggernaut, um, you're not really going to get far with it. And with the Quick Revive, that's a major help on your team. So make sure you have them two perks. And then once you can, you need to go and try your chest once. Because you don't want to be wasting all your money on the chest. And as you can see here, I got a very bad thing out of the chest. It didn't do very well for me. Um, but as you can see, I'm the first person in the game to actually get a Pack-A-Punch MP5. And now the thing I didn't realise about MP5s and any weapon off the wall is that the ammo costs differently when it's Pack-A-Punched. Now this is different to every Call of Duty game. As you could pack a bunch of weapon that was on the wall and have unlimited ammo for it for a really cheap price. But with this, they've made it so you have to pay, I think it's 4,500 points just for a restock of ammo on your MP5 or any weapon on the wall. Which is kind of a good thing, it makes zombies a little bit harder. But yet it can be a bad thing due to the fact that you might not have 4,500 to spend and you also can't buy another MP5. Unless you want to get rid of your pack a punch one, which is pretty stupid. <laughs> And it's not common on this game that you get um, max ammo as the other team are always trying to get them. And if you're new to grief, the perks count on team based sides. So if you get a door points, you collect it personally, all your team are going to get that point. The other enemy teams, is, this is just Triarch's crappy connection, constantly um, disconnecting us from the game. People are leaving. I don't know why, I don't even know why people left on our team. We haven't, we're just constantly thrashing this guy. So it's now a 2v1, and this guy has a good chance of winning as long as we didn't have this guide. At the moment, he's the, as you can see, he's down. Actually, no, he left. He just left the game. He must have given up. But you can try this for yourself. If you need any help, make sure you post it in the comments, and I'm guaranteed that you will win any game of grief with this guide. And also, if you want, you can wait for the enemies to open up the house door to save you that extra points but mostly the enemies and the random players on your team are pretty selfish and they think that the person who has the most points is going to be the best in the game when really it's a team game if one person has lots of points and one person can't get in the door to buy yourself a gun isn't really going to go well for you now as you can see I actually died before this clip because of the lag what I did is it went to horse my crate I spawned it hit by a zombie <laughs> I was getting mobbed by a zombie and it wasn't my fault so don't hate if you don't have any perks on it. And then that's a win, guys. Easy win. Round 12. Hope you enjoyed the guide. I've been Zorl. Remember to subscribe and like if you feel the need that you enjoy this and it helped you a little bit. Peace out.